someone or some person put my son alive in the trunk of a car, poured some sort of accelerant on it, and burned him up alive. The mother and father of David Comparato deeply shaken, as you can hear, but determined to find who killed their son even 25 years after it happened tonight. I've been re-examining this cold case that centers on a young man, often described as too trusting, and in a lot of ways, as vulnerable as the day he was born. David's parents will never forget the day he was adopted. We got him when he was five days old. They just brought him to my house. <laughs> Here he is. He was just a joy of our life. We'd been married four years. We'd had tried to have kids. He was very happy. If you look at some of the pictures, he's always smiling in them. But he, he did have problems. He was born with a club foot, and he didn't have a muscle in one leg. One leg was shorter than the other, which caused scoliosis of the back. As David got older, his physical and mental limitations brought on a new kind of pain. He did tend to get teased a lot. Even at age 30. David was a very naive young man. He was still so vulnerable. And we always did worry what was going to happen to him if something happened to us first. This is what happened. It was 25 years ago this month that David was last seen alive, leaving his part-time job at a Publix that used to be along this stretch of 41, just south of downtown Fort Myers. Several hours later, his parents would be awakened by the Lee County Sheriff's Office to tell them the charred remains of David's car, a light blue Ford Tempo, had been found in a remote part of East Lee County. His dental records were needed to identify his remains in the trunk of his own car. Someone or some persons put my son alive in the trunk of a car, poured some sort of accelerant on it, and burned him up alive. But whoever did it, you did it intentionally. You murdered my son. You put him in the trunk of the car alive. And when we let our thoughts think about him and dwell on it, it's like somebody just sticks a knife in your heart and then just turns it and turns it. Who would do something so vicious to someone so helpless? The answer may have something to do with David's loneliness. He wanted a girlfriend really bad. And one night, after co-workers teasingly pressured him into going into a strip club, David got some of the attention he craved. It became a habit, especially because the dancers found him as helpful as he was harmless. He did stuff for all of them. He put gas in that car. He went and got him pizza. He took them back and forth to work. If David came across dangerous men in that world, he wouldn't have known it. He always believed that everybody was his friend. He never thought anybody would hurt him. By the time he realized the strip clubs would never lead to romance, it was too late. He was just addicted to going in those places. He said, I want to stop, but I don't know how. He agreed to see a counselor. The appointment was set two days before that fateful night. His parents stopped fishing him out of the clubs. But you never thought someone was going to murder him. You never thought that. I'd, we'd have still been going in and taking him out. Clearly, someone knows what happened to David. Cold case detective Marcia Sutphin says the file on David is consistent. It appears that the description that everyone had of David was that he was a very shy, timid individual. And she's confident his murder is solvable. There are definitely people out there who, uh, who have information that could help us close this case. We're ready and willing to speak to anyone who might have information that could be helpful. If I were a good Samaritan, I would help people who are hurt. Reading one of David's grade school essays. And maybe when I would get hurt, they would be a good friend. And when they helped me, I would help them, and that would help them feel very good. Patsy longs for someone to help now. It's time. Please, please, 
I beg of you, all of you, we need answers, we need justice. For my son, our son. Now, David's dad doesn't say much these days. He's suffering from complications from MS. They really want this case solved as they get into this stage in life. A few years ago, Crime Stoppers revealed a new clue in the case. I want to show you the headline from the news press at the time. They want to talk to anyone who may have seen a shiny black vehicle either around the night David was killed or maybe just around any of the strip clubs back then in 1993. If you know anything about David or the case, even if you've already spoken with law enforcement, you can call the detective directly. She gave her direct line to be used, 239-477-1146. Or if you don't want to give your name, you can call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-780-TIPS.